In my last video, we talked about how we can use client hint cookies in order to render client's preferred theme using Remix and ChatCN UI. In this video, we're going to apply the same thing on Next13 app and see how we can use client hint cookies in order to supercharge our server actions, the React server components, and our server side rendering. Right before I go ahead and jump in and explain what's the problem we're going to solve, I would highly recommend you to watch my other video so that you can understand what is wrong with libraries like Next Themes and how client hint cookies enable us to solve the problem of not having the client preferences on the server side during rendering. You can find the link to the video somewhere above. So let me just give you a brief about client and cookies right before we continue. Client and cookies are just a set of cookies that carry the client preferences to the server side. If you're trying to build an app and you want to know the time zone of the user at the time you do a server side rendering, it's not possible. So that is where the client hint cookies come into the picture and solve the problem. When you load the app for the first time, you check if the cookies are available. If not, you set the cookies and reload the app. At the time of the reload, your server side will have access to all the cookies that you've just set and will try to render the content accordingly. And that is also the only drawback of this approach. But this is fairly quick. I mean, you would not even notice that a reload is happening because the script that reloads the app is on the top level so you most likely will reload even before you try to render the full page and the subsequent loads will be way faster so that means it will run only once when you load the app for the first time or if you happen to delete your cookies all right so now that we have gone into details about client and cookies let's take a look at what we're building we have our layout and page components and both our server components and we have a theme switcher that has the options light, dark, and system. It is a client component that calls a server action. And then we have a server component that gets a time zone information and calls an external API to get the date time information and render the same. And with regards to the client hint cookies, we are going to have two cookies. The first one is client hint prefers color scheme that carries the user's preferred theme and another one for ch time zone that carries the user's time zone information the ch prefers color scheme is used along with another cookie called theme cookie in order to make our theme switching possible let's take a quick look at our theme switching logic which i've already talked about in my other video on the initial load of the app both the ch cookie and the theme cookie are empty so that the client would set the CH cookie and reload the app. And if the user selects either light or dark, then the theme cookie is set to either light or dark. If the user selects the system theme, then we remove the theme cookie that was set by the server side and fall back to using the CH cookie value. All right, with that being said, let's start coding. For the setup of the app, I've simply followed the instructions from ShadC and UI Docs and also copied the doc mode toggle component code into my components folder. In order to use server actions, I've also enabled server actions inside my Next.js config. The first component we are going to build is our client hint check component. It is a client component that takes care of setting and updating the cookie and reloading the app if the cookies have changed or if the cookies are not set. It contains a small piece of code for nonce, which we will use inside our script. And let's go ahead and add our script that takes care of setting and updating all our client and cookies. This script is pretty important because when the script runs, it'll set all the cookies that are part of the client hints object and we will reload the app. But in most cases, the script will only have to reload the app when the user loads the app for the first time. Now that we have our client hint check component, let's go ahead and make our client hints object inside utils.ts file. The client hints object contains sub objects that have this client hint interface. It has four fields. The first is name of the cookie. And then we have get value code. That is a script that runs on the client side in order to get the values we need. And a field for fallback value that is used in absence of cookies or if the cookies are disabled. And an optional get transformed value method that is used to validate the incoming client cookie values on the server side. Based on this interface, this is how our client hints object 
would look like. And one interesting thing that you can see here is that the keys that we've used for the client hints here are also used as a name for the server cookies if they are set. And at the end of the file, we have a method to extract the cookie value from the client hint object. Let's go ahead and import our client hints object inside our client hint check component so that it would not complain. Now let's go ahead and build our server action that is called by our dark mode toggle theme switcher. Now let's go ahead and add this action inside our dark mode toggle and call this from a theme change handler. That looks good. Now let's use the theme values from cookies inside our root layout to set our Tailwind dark class. So just to make sure this works as expected, if you go to your global CSS file, you should be able to see a dark class that exists and it updates the colors for you. Once the theme value is set, let's also import our client hint check component so that it can set and update our client hint cookie value when the app loads or reloads. And also let's add some theme based conditional code inside our body. Let's see if our theme switching works. So the theme switching works as expected, but when the user selects the system theme and updates our object system theme, our app is not getting updated. So we need to fix that. So for that, we have to add a small piece of code inside our client hint check component that keeps track of the operating system theme changes and will update our cookie and refresh our app's router. we can see that everything is working as expected. Now that our dark mode toggle theme switching is implemented, let's go ahead and implement our time zone server component. That accepts time zone as a string, calls an external API to get the date time information and prints the same. And we will use this component inside our page.tsx file right underneath our theme switcher component. And we also need to feed the value of this component from our client and cookie. Let's go ahead and add that method. Now everything is complete and let's go test it out. We already tested our theme switcher to be working, but you can also see that every time our theme switching is happening, the server components re-render again, and we get a new value of our date time string. And also if I check out the cookies that have been set by our client and check component, you can see that they're available for us. We have one cookie for the theme and we have another cookie for the time zone. So they will always be available. In case I clear the cookies and try to reload the app, the client hint check component will check if the cookies exist. If not, we'll set the cookie and we'll trigger a window.reload on the app. Well, that's it for our implementation. Everything seems to be working and the app architecture that we talked about is complete. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more and I will talk to you soon.